You could say that it's almost a sin not to use Rosaria's deadly ice powers in your team, and the only question remains, how will you build her? There's a couple of things you need to keep in mind before you go off extracting sinful confessions from your enemies, and probably the most important one would be the way Rosaria's teleportation works. And besides the ability to menacingly appear behind your enemy's back, you're also going to get 12% increased critical rate if you manage to pull it off, but only if you can get behind the enemy, which means big monsters are out of the question, as well as attacking someone who is standing near the boundaries of an arena or edge of the mountain. So pick your targets carefully and make sure to choose someone who is a valid candidate for that sweet critical rate boost. Now for the elemental burst, it comes packing a lot of firepower, but only if you can keep your enemies under control, because while you do land two initial attacks in the form of polearm strikes, once the frozen structure lands on the ground, it will release a blast of cryo damage every two seconds for a total of four times, or six, if you unlock your second constellation. And the radius of the constant damage uptick isn't the biggest, but more or less what you would expect from a four-star character, so it's going to be all about how you're going to manage the fight inside the damaging radius. And that's pretty much much all there is to our gothic nun. She's not the most complex character out there, and if you're going to use her extensively as your main damage dealer, she's going to offer a pretty active playstyle thanks to low cooldown time of her elemental skill, which will let you quickly switch between targets and hopefully help you maintain the critical boost from her passive. But getting more stats out of your equipment is the next step in this holy crusade. It's always exciting to see a character that offers multiple builds, and this time around, Rosaria can be either used as her main physical damage dealer or crowd support team member. And for the majority of players, Crescent Pike is going to be the natural free-to-play option to go for, even if it's not as amazing when compared to someone like Xiongling, who can produce more hits from her normal attacks, but even then, this weapon is basically your safest choice to go for when you want to use Rosaria as your physical main damage dealer. Of course, producing extra hits and having physical damage bonus from the substat is one thing, but if you struggle with maintaining usual critical rate or damage ratio, you can always opt in for deathmatch or blacklift weapons, which also act as a great solution if you're planning to switch her roles from physical to cryo support. Speaking of which, there's a bit more flexibility when it comes to her cryo damage build, so if you need more energy for her burst, going for Favonius Lance can be a great option, or if needed, you can also craft yourself prototype Star Glitter at the Blacksmith, but it's possible you'll want to use those materials for getting more refinements put towards Crescent Pot. Also, if you're going to mainly use her cryo damage in combination with melt reactions, and she will be leading with the triggers, getting Dragon's Bane isn't a bad choice as well. And if you're looking for an even more specific suggestion, there's also Lithic Spear that sadly won't count Rosaria into the passive bonus, so you'll need to have the rest of your teammates hailing from Liyue in order to get the best bang for your buck. But obviously, if you do get your hands on any of the 5-star weapons, she's going to perform amazingly well with them, especially if you're using something like Staff of Homa or the Primordial Jade Wing spear, and Genshin constantly keeps getting new weapons introduced, so you can get faster evaluations by following us on Twitter, link in the description. Now when we take a look at her artifacts, things can get a little tricky, or the better description would be situational. For example, if you're going to be using her with Crescent Pike, then keep in mind, she won't benefit from the full four-set bonus of Gladiators when we talk about the extra hits the weapon passive produces, so in this case, going for two-piece bonuses of Bloodstain and Gladiators could be better, although, at the end of the day, we're talking about not the most drastic changes in damage, so sticking with the full set of gladiators most of the time is an excellent choice, especially if you use any other weapon. But then we also have Blizzard Strayer and the bonus it offers from its 4-piece set, which can be an excellent solution if you're going to be primarily using her in freeze team comps, but can even work well without that specific team build, although you will be missing out on not fully utilizing everything the set has to offer. And besides, obtaining good stats, especially if going after the full set bonus is not an easy task, so splitting into two sets is the most realistic situation you're going to end up with, and for this matter, a combination between Noblesse and Blizzard Strayer is going to be the superb choice for your cryo support build. And with the sets out of the way, just like with any other damage dealer, attack percentage on Sans, physical or cryo damage bonus on Goblet, depending on which build you're going after, and then critical rate or damage on Circlet is the most basic solution for your artifact main stats. And then when we go one level deeper, the substats themselves are pretty much what you would expect, with critical rate and 
damage staying in the lead, and attack percentage as second priority, while energy recharge or elemental mastery remain as the third choice, depending on whether you want more bursts or utilize bigger melt reaction damage. Finally, for the talent priority, you definitely want to increase her normal attacks first if you're going after her physical damage dealer build, while keeping the elemental skill as your next focus, since you will have a lot of field time, which works out well thanks to the skill's low cooldown. And as for her support build, go for burst, then skill afterwards. And that's pretty much it. Whether you decide to go after her physical or cryo build, the difference between the two mostly lies in her weapon selection and artifacts, but if you're undecided and looking for a middle ground, even if that won't be the most optimal choice, then going after Blizzard Strayer set together with one of the crit rate or damage weapons could be something to think about. Either way, Rosario on her own won't provide godly damage and will need to enlist the help of other members waiting to join her Church of Pain. Dominating the battlefield with our icy powers can get even more fun once we put her into a decent team composition, and because we have two builds in mind, the first one would be her acting as a physical damage dealer, which means you'll want to get your hands on someone who can provide consistent electro damage, so Fischl or Beto are perfect for the starter duo, but you could also instead get Xing Cho to enable those freeze reactions. Speaking of which, for the ultimate tag team, you can use her together with Child, but she'll need to act as a support for him when the constant explosions are going off of her burst, and Child can maintain freeze reaction on the enemies. However, because of the way her burst works, she will find the best synergy with someone who is able to keep the enemies under control, so someone like Sucrose, Venti are amazing for this, but even Ganyu or Mona are great since their skills pull the enemy's attention and make them stay in one place. Now going back to her cryo support role, it's important to remember that she actually boosts her team's critical rate after using her burst, which depends on how much of the stat she has herself, but even then, she can be insanely useful for Melt, Freeze and Superconduct teams, and especially the latter, if you manage to unlock her final constellation, which will shred away 20% of enemy's physical resistance, so you can bet your top rosary bead, Razor will be happy to have someone like her on his side. Finally, if you're using her Blizzard Strayer set, then combining it together with Chongyun and other Hydro teammates can lead to a one-stop solution to freezing your enemies and utilizing everything the artifact set has to offer. So in essence, the mix of physical and cryo makes her into a very adaptive adaptable team member that you can use in a lot of builds, and this only gets better due to her elemental alignment and how strong it is for the endgame. After waiting for this deadly nun to arrive, since her debut in 1.2 update, we finally get to experience everything she has to offer, and as the newest 4-star character, she definitely feels like an exciting addition to the already existing roster of characters. Overall, the ability to build her as either a physical damage dealer or cryo support is an amazing opportunity for those who wish to have multiple choices in their gameplay, but even then, what's even cooler is that she actually has very decent damage multipliers, which leads to pretty high damage numbers, especially if you produce melt reactions. However, there are a few things that feel a little out of place, and one of them is her wonky elemental skill, which doesn't always work as intended, not to mention other obstructions like bigger enemies or boundaries of an area can lead to frustrating positioning, which is an important mechanic to pull off, especially if you want to maintain her critical rate boost from passive. Also, because her burst remains stationary, the radius of the blasting damage could definitely be a little bigger, especially with how agile her gameplay is. Still, even with these drawbacks, she's a very solid 4-star character, which is able to boost your team's critical rate, and thanks to her element, she also packs a lot of value into her overall damage output. The only thing that remains for you is to pray to the god she believes in, so you can pull multiple of her constellations without too much trouble. Now that you're a true believer of Rosaria's crushing power, it's time for you to build the most exciting version of her. But before you do that, make sure to subscribe to this channel by enabling the bell notifications on, and don't forget to gently press the like button. Also, producing these kinds of videos takes a lot of time and effort, so any mistakes will be mentioned in the pinned comment below. Finally, be sure to check out more of our stuff on Twitter, link in the description. Thank you for watching us, and be careful not to confess all your sins to Rosaria.